Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. We've got shiny new things to play with, and I mean shiny. I'll show you those in just a minute. This is the new Joy in the Journey collection from Close to My Heart. Yes, it's a brand new special, despite everything that's going on there being amazing and taking care of us and giving us fun new things to create with. But look, look what I did. I got the stamp set. I ordered the bundle and in my haste, I messed up and I got the uh, stamp version intended for our Canadian and South Pacific uh, markets. So the word colors is spelled differently than what we, how we spell it here in the US. So I ordered just the stamp set and then I'll swap these out and give this to one of my uh, maker friends abroad. So a uh, cute stamp though, let the journey begin. That's what dictated today's layout and I'll explain more about that here in a moment. This is the coordinating sticker sheet and a lot of these images have that UV coating. Can you see the shine on there? So we've got a few like here's title, uh, word sentiment stickers that I love. This is really fun. This could be part of an embellishment cluster or a title. Everything doesn't need to be perfect to be wonderful. So I like that. Uh, and then all of these little elements you can make banners with and then kind of washi tape strips, lots of fun stuff. Arrows, oh happy day. So that's going to be fun to create with. I went ahead and got the entire bundle, which includes the paper pack, the card stock, and this stamp set. And look, there's uh, a little string here and stamps that you can make the banner, but you can also stamp that string and then use the stickers on the sticker sheet. So these are the card stock uh, pattern, or not card stock, these are the pattern papers. And I love this one. It has like this kind of ombre look to it and they're double sided. I've already got them flipped over. So this is the reverse side of that. We've got this kind of large chevron going down. You hear me talk about leading lines all the time, like leading lines in photos, uh, leading lines with our embellishments. And I kind of think when I look at this, it'd be neat to have like a center focused design um, as one option. Uh, but you could just, of course, use bits of this. But I, I like that. You could turn it this way too. I think that would be fun. So that's one set of papers. And then we have a little gingham with a beautiful floral on the opposite side. And for those that don't know, Journey is close to my heart's color of the year. And it's my favorite out of all of the colors of the year in quite some time. Maybe not all of them, but the more recent ones. Then we have polka dots and this geometric pattern on the opposite side of that one. Now, these are really pretty. That's my favorite there along with this one here. Those two are just gorgeous. So well, let me set these aside and then we get into the cardstock. Now this is gorgeous. Look at that shine. Very pretty. So that is gold foiling in that particular pattern. And then for this one, it's like this holographic shimmery floral paper. Absolutely gorgeous. We have a silver foil stripe. And then these three have patterns on them, but they are uh, the UV coating. So you can see there. And if you don't like that, I don't know why you wouldn't. It's absolutely amazing. But the opposite side is the lighter version of Journey. So lots of fun little more subtle patterns that add background texture and just a really fun look. So there's, can you see that one? And then you have uh, cardstock here. And again, Close to My Heart's cardstock is two-toned, so you get the lighter version and the darker version. So this is the bundle. You can buy the pieces a la carte. Let me set these aside and grab my Versamats. This is going to be a double page layout here. A moment ago, I mentioned the Let the Journey Begin title gave me the idea for this layout. I've got several photos here, and this is a very recent trip to Utah, and we are in the Stampin' Up! headquarters. That's Jema and Chelsea. Many of you know them, fellow YouTubers and creative design team uh, instructors. So we were in the Stampin' Up! headquarters. I'll tell you more about why we were there. And this is, they had this museum area. It was beautiful. And there were some really cool photo opportunities. And I just love this room with all of the artwork and color and just inspiring little bits of goodness. And then this, Inspire, Create, and Share 
chair. Those are letters and they're filled with like boxwood leaves, which appeals to not only my creative side, but my gardening, my love of gardening. So I thought that that was really cool. So we're also up in their, um, on the catwalk overlooking their distribution process, which was fascinating. So high tech. And then here's some more fellow makers. They broke us into smaller groups and took us around to tour the facility. So really, really awesome experience. And I am excited to document these. Let me set this aside here. I think I might use these for my background. I just really love all of that, uh, you know, visual texture there. Now I get asked all the time how I know what sizes to print my photos. I print at home and I really enjoy scrapbooking with, you know, multiple size photos. I think that you can get more pictures on the page and you can, it just, you know, makes it a little bit easier to incorporate different designs. And I've got, these are just shy of four by six, four by four and three by four. So what I usually do is I print my favorite photos the largest and then accompanying photos here comes dave hi dave i'll print the accompanying supporting photos in a smaller size so wow he's going to lay right on my layout so we're going to take an intermission until dave decides he wants to move Okay, I managed to coax him just off to the side by putting a sacrificial piece of cardstock for him to lay on. So he's happy. Okay, so I could do something like this. And I do like that. Or we could go, you know, there's so many different ways to do this. You could do something like that. I like that also. There's words in this picture, Stampin' Up! logo, and there's words in this picture. So I don't want those right next to each other. Just I feel like it maybe balances a little bit better to have those spread out. Some things to consider when, you know, designing your paper is the title. So, you know, if I use this versus this sticker life is good this one would also work so I just have to be mindful of putting those together because if I'm going to stamp this right onto the background you know if I'm going to stamp it on a darker background I would need to maybe use some white embossing powder to make that pop so just some things to be mindful of as you're putting your layout together Looking at the pattern papers I have to incorporate, I can tell you the flowers is definitely going to work well with this design and these photos. We can maybe do the polka dots. I mean, you could always bring in, this is a busier pattern, so it's something I would add in small doses. The polka dot is on the other side. So the gingham is cute, but I really like the flowers. So we might bring in a lot of the flowers and then just little accents of these. And then for the cardstock, I have all of these, you know, foiled and UV coating papers. So we might want to bring some of these in. The flowers are so pretty. I really love this, but I don't know if I want to do the flowers against the flowers. So it may be kind of be one or the other. And then let's see, I've got gold and I have silver. So I can kind of go either way with the foiled accents. If I want to bring any of that in, we've got choices here. I think that's, yeah, that is silver. It almost looks gold. It's picking up one of the lights here above my desk is a, has a yellow hue to it. So it's making it look gold. But when that light wasn't on, it's definitely silver. So we also have these different pattern or um, UV coated papers. And let's just see what this looks like behind here. Um, let me try this one. I do like that. Sometimes you just have to try things and then all of a sudden one will fall into place and, and you know, yep, that's the one. Let's bring back in our florals too. I often will focus on the left hand side and then, you know, when I kind of get a feel for how that's going to go, the I'll start pulling it or balancing it to the right hand side. Hopefully that makes sense. I feel like the left is, you know, the title page and usually that's where the title goes. And, and so I get that figured out and then I can start embellishing and bringing in paper layers to the second side. So we have that option, but we also have this one. And I think I like that. I do. We're going to go with that one. What I think I'm gonna do is I often, I make my picture smaller than four by six so that I can cut this directly in half and have six inches for each side. But I think that I wanna offset these and keep them the same size as this block over here. So this block, if we space those out about yay, 
is about seven and a half inches. So I'm going to make these to where our block is going to also be the same size block as over here. So if I cut this at about eight and a half inches, I won't have, I only have one of these sheets. So I would have to use a different pattern on the other side. And I think that that is totally fine because even though the pattern's different, the overall look is very similar and I'm leaving space in between. So there's visual break. I wouldn't want to butt them up next to each other to give the impression of one continuous page. So by allowing a little space, we can switch up the pattern. And I cannot stress enough, these are not rules. This is just how my brain works when I'm designing and things that I consider and, th and think of. So I said seven and a half, so let's go eight and a half. We're gonna go an inch bigger here so that there's room for space on the top and bottom. And I don't know, let's see, maybe we'll just go nine, no, let's go 10. 10 feels right. We can always trim it down. And you know, I can still add these other, you know, it doesn't have to be matchy matchy. So if I wanted the exact same pattern on the opposite side, I could just uh, use this off cut here from the bottom and do something, you know, like that to bring that over. And I might do that. So it just kind of evolves as you start playing around here. I am thinking this would benefit from a little border of white just to kind of separate those layers. So we will map that and then let's bring this flower paper in on the opposite side. So I just want to repeat the colors and patterns over here. So maybe if we just kind of peek this out from underneath a little bit and let me see how these look on that background. I think what I'm going to do is maybe bring a little bit, let me just scoot that over. I've got some scraps of white here. So we could bring this in. You could tell that was gutted from a center of an, a full piece of white daisy card stock. I don't want to cover up too much of this background because, you know, we have a lot of interest in detail. So there's something to be mindful of, but I want enough of this pattern to show. So we need maybe just a little bit. And I feel like these now need a border because they have the white mat, but it's not really popping off that background. So I will probably mat those on just some plain journey cardstock. This is kind of going to be a monochromatic. I could bring in other colors. There's lots of colors. You could add pinks or, you know, I mean, in here, there's so many different colors that you could add into accent, which I might do in the embellishments. We'll see, but I kind of am having fun with just the monochromatic look. So I'm going to cut some of these down and we'll come back and put it together. Before I do that, I was just looking at this. We have six inches approximately there. And this one I have placed over all the way at seven inches. But if we just uh, kind of back it off and cut one paper in half, we could use six inches over here and then over here. And then we're only using one piece of this pattern paper for both sides. So I made a mistake. I'm not sure what I was thinking, but I cut this down to uh, 10 inches and it's okay. Actually, I was kind of thinking that, but I want more of the pattern to show. So what I'm going to do is make this, I'm just going to put this piece back on and line it up exactly where I cut it. And nobody's going to be able to tell because the pattern's continuous. So I just, like I said, I wanted more of that to show. And especially because the seam is right where that layer's going to hit. So nobody's going to see that. And I'm going to layer some embellishments over the bottom here. And for this side, I have this piece here that is, is 10 inches and that is 10 by six. I am going to gut out this piece that's going to be hidden behind my white card stock, but we're going to go something like that. And then I cut journey photo mats for these two photos because again that white border was not doing anything against the white background so that is going to go like that and then this one looks nice against this cardstock here so i'll get everything situated when i go to adhere down my layers but i like how this is taking shape I do want to show you I did gut out behind there and out of this paper also and then I did the same for this one and I'm going to do behind here but I need to kind of see where my pieces are going to sit 
before I completely uh, cut into that piece. I can go ahead and bring my photos in and then I've got my black ink. I'm just adding a little black inking around this pattern paper here. I already did the piece on the left hand side. Every year close to my heart holds what they call a founders event and it's two days we go to the home office in Utah and it's just a really great time to connect with like-minded makers and we just talk strategy and product and business and it's a lot of fun. Well, we all know, you know, the news, if you're in the crafting community, you have definitely heard the sad news that close to my heart is closing and so instead of canceling this event, it was hosted by Stampin' Up! because Stampin' Up! and Close to My Heart have been in negotiations. We traveled to Utah feeling completely uncertain about what the future held. We were sad. We were grieving. I mean, it, it's for those of you that know, you know, but we were met with open arms. They, everybody at Stampin' Up! was so incredibly welcoming and warm and compassionate and it was genuine. And we left there, they shared of course a bunch of information and all of the things and changes that we're going to be um, putting into place going forward. And we left there excited and just ready to start on our new adventure. So this, you know, let the journey begin is very fitting uh, with this stamp set. And I think it's going to make a great uh, subtitle on this page. I do want to bring a little bit more of this pattern paper so it looks like one continuous piece. I've got a couple scraps there. So I thought I would just utilize those. And then same for the white. I want just a little tiny pop of white peeking out. Let me grab my T-square ruler just to make sure that is straight. If you are in my private customer appreciation Facebook group, then you already know we did kind of a live Q&A update session about a week ago. And I shared with them that I have officially decided to join Stampin' Up! And that will be active May 1st. For now, I am relishing and just enjoying every little bit of this company I have grown to love over the past 16 years. And then of course, I'm going to continue using my stash. I have so much close to my heart product and I love it. I'm not getting rid of my things. So I will continue sharing those with you and hopefully you can use the ideas for the items in your stash. Let me just sneak that white back in there. Now I want to use this sticker. It says everything doesn't need to be perfect to be wonderful. And I really think this title is perfect because Stampin' Up! is not an exact carbon copy of Close to My Heart. So it's, is it perfect? No, but it's still wonderful and I'm very, very excited. Everything I have seen, everything they shared at this event, for those of you that have grown to love the scrapbooking collections from Close to My Heart, you are going to love it. You're going, it's going to feel like home to you. So stay tuned. That is coming out, uh, you know, this year. And I think you're going to be really excited. So we have our little stamp here and I want the, this let the journey begin. So I'm just kind of trying out a few different places. And I think this spot is definitely going to be a good fit. Now I want to kind of keep this, I could stamp it in journey on a white background, but I think it'd be fun to heat emboss this with white embossing powder onto the uh, darker journey background. I have my paper in the corner and then we'll just go over it with the anti-static powder tool. And I have white ultra fine detail embossing powder from Ranger and you can use Versamark, but I'm using white daisy pigment ink. The pigment ink is more like a paint and it sits on top so it stays wet longer. So when I am using white embossing powder, I prefer to use the white daisy pigment ink. I'm stamping this several times because I just want it to be really nice and crisp. So once we have that done, we can just sprinkle the embossing powder. I've got a little coffee filter underneath me to catch the remaining powder. We'll just tap off the excess. And then if you get some that does stick, just grab a little tiny paintbrush and you can kind of flick away those little stray powders. I have my heat gun off to the side and I like to start from the back side of the cardstock. It doesn't disturb or blow any of the fine detail, you know, the powder from the fine detail. So you can see that starting to melt, just kind of move it around. You can work from the back to the front and that prevents warping. Now off camera, I'll go ahead and fussy cut these out. And now we have a super cute little subtitle. I think I'm gonna set that right up top there. 
When considering embellishments, I thought some flowers would be nice. So I have this little tray and these are random leftover flowers from other projects that just didn't either make the cut or they were extra. And I put leaves in here too. So I always kind of look in here and it's fun to just grab things. This was a flower I made using the layered flower dies and it's a mix of holographic paper and vellum and it's very dimensional, very shiny and pretty. And I thought that could work. The holographic kind of reflects the light, but it does, it's a little bit different blue than, than the journey. It, it goes, it could go, but I also have this little vellum flower. When I wind up with vellum scraps, I love stamping on vellum and I thought maybe these could work. Let's just kind of try here. I also have some leaves. There's white leaves. These are from the sprigs and leaves dies. So we could tuck these in. We could also cut some from vellum, but these might be nice fillers. Uh, I could, you know, always make more. So I only have one. I was digging through and I only see one vellum flower, but still it was kind of nice because that gives me the idea that, hey, this might be really kind of a cool look. So I'm gonna go find that stamp set and make a bunch more. So I made a whole bunch of goodies to create with. Now these flowers are from the Floral Bloom stamp set. And I really, really love this one. It's probably one I'll never part with because there's such a great variety of flowers. And I know this was super popular. So maybe you have this in your stash also. But what I did is I only selected the outlines. So there's some solid stamps, but there's also the outline stamps. And because I wanted the you know vellum to show, I chose the outline stamps and made um, some of those. I found a butterfly in my stash left over from somewhere and then I cut some more leaves and these are from the the sprigs and leaves. So this is one of my favorite leaf dyes. I know Jama loves this one too and it's kind of a go-to and then I found these little guys in my stash. So maybe I could, they're like a little fern. That's from an old punch I have. So we can just kind of play around with these. We have this awkward space here. I'm thinking of putting my journaling here so I could do a little floral cluster here and here, and that would kind of draw your eye across. So it's, now it's just a matter of kind of tucking these in and you know letting them find their spot wherever they look best. I am starting with the largest of the flowers, and then there's a smaller variety, so I'll tuck those in second. And I've got the white leaves. Now, they show through the vellum, so this one's a little bit tricky. The rest I'm kind of tucking under the paper so that the leaves are, you don't really see where they're originating from. It was really neat sharing this experience with Chelsea and Jama, and this is another big part of why I am choosing uh, Stampin' Up. So, you know, I, I love Close to My Heart, absolutely love everything about the products, the quality, the community, and Stampin' Up! is going to be incorporating that, but they already have the other pieces and stamps. You guys, I love stamps, and I need me a company that has some stamps, but... <laughs> It's so neat that people from all over the world, I've got friends in Australia and New Zealand, Chelsea's from Canada, Jameis here in the United States, but it just brings us all together and we it's so fun to share the excitement. We're like, you know, when we first get the new catalog, we get on a Zoom call and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, it's fun. And I'm just really excited to be sharing this adventure with my crafty friends and the crafty community. And it's just going, it's just, I'm encouraged. I'm very encouraged. So enough of my rambling and back to the layout. Let me clean these little bits up here. I just received this beautiful little gift from fellow crafter Joan and I thought, well, maybe I could use some of these. They're lace paper and I don't know, you know, where she gets them if they're from a little store, but they're just so pretty. These are like garden gates and doilies. We all know I love doilies. And then this one here, they come in these adorable little vellum envelopes and they are the prettiest little die cut shapes. So this one has leaves and they are very delicate, but look at that. Is that not absolutely gorgeous? Here's a maple leaf. And then we've got a couple different leaves and then beautiful butterflies. So I'm not gonna use the butterflies on this layout. They're a little bit big for the space I have left, but I just thought they are gorgeous. Aren't those pretty? I figured you guys would appreciate them, but I was thinking maybe I could use these leaves. There is another package that has more like leaves and sprigs. 
So we can kind of try this. Now there's not, you know, duplicates, so you'd have to maybe divide it up to spread it out and have maybe a couple of the leaves in the other clusters. So I almost think the solid on the against this background, the solid looks a little bit better because it's kind of muddled. Like that one, you can't really tell where the pattern paper begins and the leaf ends are too similar. So let's go back with this one. But yeah, I cannot wait to use these. Thank you, Joan. They are just so gorgeous. And I'm very happy to have these to create with. I can't wait. I need to adhere all my little embellishments down. So I'm using glue behind the leaves. And again, see, I'm tucking this one underneath the photo so you can't see that little tail. And then I'm only putting adhesive on the parts of the vellum that are tucked behind my title or other elements. Adhesive shows through vellum. It's um, hard to camouflage. So I'm just being very mindful of that. And, you know, sometimes just a little strategically paced placed tape runner and it's not too overly obvious but it is something you have to work around so let's get this little guy in there where those connect and i also have these stickers they say happiness and awesome i thought these would be good to include so maybe there mm, i don't know if i like that in the middle let's bump those down to the bottom section here and try that I do think that looks a little bit better balanced down there. Now we need to add some journaling. I kind of have a big story to say. So I typed that up on my printer and I wanted to show you, I've had questions about printing on my Epson. So I'm putting in a piece of cardstock and I'm going to change that to plain paper. I had it set to uh, premium photo paper glossy. So I'm just changing it to plain and you'll see it prints beautifully. It goes right through and uh, you can take this with you to crops. It's nice and portable. So there is my journaling. There's a tiny little black ink on the top and I suspect that happened because I recently did a you know cycle where you clean your ink. So maybe there was a little bit more just on the rollers because that usually doesn't happen. So we're trimming that down to a four by four square and I am using my pocket plus page. You'll see, I'm gonna show you, I have lots more photos here. Actually, I'm gonna adhere those together so they don't move around around and one side's going to be the front the journaling is going to be on the back so let me just line that up I can tell you Stampin' Up! has confirmed they will have flip flaps I don't know if they're going to have these pocket plus pages hopefully but flip flaps that had me doing a happy dance I'm super excited about that so you can see I've added these are four by four pockets but I've added three by four photos and stickers there we all are on the bus headed to Stampin' Up! headquarters. It was really fun. Now this I thought was so appropriate. It says, you are welcome here. And there's Chelsea. We came down for lunch and they spoiled us with product. Now this is the Stampin' Up! Um, kind of the help desk area and they made us all a handmade card, which was amazing. And then just some other fellow makers uh, in that lower picture there. I got this stamp set from Close to My Heart a long time ago, and I thought, how perfect. The You Are Welcome here. I mean, I knew. I knew I would need that stamp one day, right? <laughs> so now that I've added my journaling in the center, these Pocket Plus pages sit right in the center, and you can flip them over. So it's like this fun interactive element and a great way to add more photos. But I was going to put my journaling down there, and now we kind of have this empty spot. So I've got more leaves here, and I'm just looking for some stickers. This one says, You Shine, and that could work but it's not quite standing out. So let's look through my little journaling spots. There's a vellum circle, a white circle. We got a half circle. We can try that one, tuck it underneath, maybe layer this on top. That's not bad, that's cute, but let's try the vellum circle and see how that one looks. Mm, nope, not enough definition. Let's try the white one. I should cut more stamp and cut more flowers, but I already put everything away. I still may do that. And you'll see I make a change to this area, you'll have to go see it on the still shots because I did it after filming the video. So by the time I share it on social media, you'll see I switch the word sentiment strips to this lower area here. So I'm just kind of looking for something to fill that space and maybe just to brighten it up a little bit. So this is like kind of like a faux washi tape look. So we'll stick that little sticker there, layer that over. And I like that. Let me hold this up so you can see I did add some silver glitter gems to my banner. And then I also sprinkled them around the layout in the different embellishment clusters there. You can kind of see them just kind of scattered there. 
I'm slightly bothered by that random end. Maybe I should trim that off. I could have you know, been a little bit more strategic about uh, the way I tucked that leaf sprig in, but it is glued down. So I'm fine with it. It doesn't bother me enough to, you know, risk damaging my page. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And then this one is tucked under the let the journey begin. And then you can see more little silver glitter gems there. So again, I'm going to move those stickers and you'll see that in the still shots when I share over on uh, Pinterest, Instagram, or Facebook. So if you're looking to, you know, for inspiration, you can head on over there. And thank you so much for joining me. Everything I used is in the description box below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about the news with Stampin' Up. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.